from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounding him, departed, and leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he had saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him. And when he had looked on him, he passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to the inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. If we would, we would use for a subject on tonight, the comeback from the setback. The comeback from the setback. And for a subtopic, strip wounded and left for half dead. Stripped, wounded, and left for half dead. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Yes, Luke 10, 30 through 35. I have the scars to prove it. When we begin to look at the scripture, we begin to look at this passage. It is uh, uh, dealing with uh, Jesus uh, having a conversation with the disciples and this lawyer comes about and he's asking a question and he begins to say, who is thy neighbor? Because in this hour, it is, it is, it is almost imperative that, that the church has almost lost its neighborly spirit. <laughs> You know, people, uh, when I grew up, it, it was like uh, your children was everybody's children. What went on with you went on with everybody. And people were having attitudes and cranking up and mad because you told their children something. But the, but the Bible begins to explain that this particular lawyer begins to ask Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus goes in to tell a story. He begins to tell a story about a man that was on his way somewhere. And God began to deal with me concerning this conference. And he began to say that, first of all, uh, what you have to understand is that every setback that God has allowed you to experience, it is because he is developing a comeback. And many would want for you to die and to waddle in what you are in and to stay stuck in what you're in. But the very fact of the matter that you press tonight and you press last night and you pressed the night before is reference that you believe that God is tailor making a miracle with you in mind. I tell your neighbor, say there's getting ready to be a, 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 a comeback from the setback. Uh, 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 the Bible begins to explain this story and it, and it begins to break things down and it, and it begins to say this in the living translation Jesus replied with the illustration there was a Jewish man traveling on a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho. The will always interrupt you when you're trying to go somewhere. Uh, if you're not experiencing any interruptions, it means you're not going anywhere. But when you're going somewhere, the enemy's job is to kill, steal, and to destroy from you and to stop you from where you're going. Uh, look at your neighbor saying, it might not look like it right now, uh, but I'm on my way somewhere. Uh, the Bible says that he is on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho, and the Bible says that he was attacked by Y'all ain't gonna help me. Uh, some of you are surrounded by bandits. Uh, people that pose as your friends, but they're really foes. I'm preaching better than you're responding. Uh, he's on his way somewhere, and someone begins to set up a trap in which they can ensnare him, in which they can stop him, in which they can block him, in which they can hinder him. The Bible says that he is traveling, he is on his way, and the bandits find uh, him. The and when you begin to look at bandits, they were thieves. It is amazing how people will plot how they can destroy you, even in the state. You know I ain't even where I want to be, and folks mad at me. I ain't even got what God promised me yet, and people got an attitude with me. He's on his way somewhere, and the bandits come. The Bible says that he's traveling. He's traveling. He's traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he is attacked. The Bible says first that he is stripped. The word stripped means to leave bare. Good God. Uh, many of you, when we talk about this thing, the enemy job was to leave you bare. He began to attack your finances. He began to attack your mind. He began to attack your self-esteem to strip you from everything. 
thing that was surrounding you to strip you of your identity. See, the enemy doesn't want you to recognize who you are. Because when you recognize who you are, you can survive in what you in. Because you understand that it's just a temporary setback because God is getting ready to give you a comeback. The Bible says that they're stripped. The word stripped not only means to, to, to leave bad, but it means to empty. It was the job of the enemy to empty you out of your joy, to empty you out of your seal. Uh, 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 look, it was a point where you were moving in the things of God, and because you were you were cut off and you were stolen from, there was a place where you hit when you were dormant. You don't want to talk about it. Have you ever prayed and didn't feel nothing? Have you ever lifted your hands and didn't feel nothing? Have you ever spoken tongues? Oh, see, y'all don't want to keep it real in here. There's some days I get up and I don't feel nothing. But thank God it's not in a feeling. Because sometimes I will be stripped of my identity if I allow the enemy to get in my mind. The Bible says that uh, this Jewish man is traveling on a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho. He is he is left bare. He is left empty. The word empty, uh, also a synonym, it means it was cleared out. He 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 was clear. Everything he had, they they took it off of him. Imagine he had his clothes on, and they start taking his clothes on. See, it's enough that you didn't caught me down here and robbed me. Now you want to embarrass me, y'all ain't right. Uh, uh, for many of you, you had some naked situations that left you embarrassed, that left you discouraged, that left you confused. I'm talking about when you paid your tithes and your offering and your life still got cut off, y'all ain't talking to me. I'm talking about when you did right by God and you still couldn't make your cut payment. Uh, look at James say, everything I'm going through ain't sin. Some stuff God is testing me. He's testing my character. He, he's testing my tribe. He's testing my commitment. He, 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 he's, 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 he's on a place of Jerusalem. We just talking. Jerusalem to Jericho. He is attacked by bandits. He is stripped. He is, he is left bare. He is left empty. He is left cleared. He is left robbed. What do you do when you're standing for God and you feel robbed? When you feel like you've been forsaken? You, you feel like you've been broken? You feel like you've been left out there all by yourself? The Bible says that he is stripped of his clothes. Uh -huh. Lord have mercy. Uh, and they took his money, good Lord, and they beat him up. Uh, the Bible says uh, that they left him wounded. Let's deal with the word wounded. It means to be inflicted. It means to be injured. It, left, it means to be hurt. It means to be scarred. It means to be damaged. It means to be injured. It's not enough that this man is on his way to his place of purpose. And in the midst of his place of purpose, there's some bandits that begin to try to strip him and rob him. And not only do they rob him, but now they wound him. What do you do when you're wounded by people you love? Let me come down your boulevard. What, what do you do when you, you're wounded, you're injured, you, 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 you're afflicted, you, you can't get up from where you are. It looks like you're never going to make it back. Your strength has 
your stomach. Because he wants you to understand that the setback about to be a comeback. Well, just give me a minute. I'm going to work this scripture. Y'all started off a little rough. Can we give God glory? You better know that tonight is about a, a comeback. So I mean, not only is this a women's conference, but God says I'm getting ready to make the ministry come back. Uh, a preacher, yeah. a clergy person, uh, come on. Yeah. 